Well, good morning. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do a little follow-up video this morning. Welcome to the podcast. Um, glory to Jesus Christ. I did manage to get the top off of that guitar yesterday, and so I thought I'd bring it out here and show you uh, what's going on with it. Um, now, the top is here. Um, so, let's take a look at this thing. Now, uh, you... On the back side of this, we got a couple of braces. Um, the bracing didn't let go, it's still held fast there. Uh, the deal is that um, the bracing that's supposed to go around the sound hole is made out of plywood. The plywood's very flexible. Nothing to be using for a brace. Uh, also, there's some other problems here. Uh, now the bridge was attached with screws of all things. Now, when you put strings on a guitar, it's got to have several hundred pounds of pressure per square inch on that get on the top of it. Those strings are steel and you tighten them up, especially if you put six strings on a guitar, you got a lot of pressure on a guitar. So as I told you, I would take the top off of this thing. Well, see, the thing is that um, the guitar has a way of folding up as you see that how that is. Uh, it, so it just folded up. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is building a new top and putting a rod down and through the middle of this so it'll keep that thing from folding. That's the first step I'm going to do is install a rod. Now the new top is going to go on here and I'm going to cut F holes in it instead of a sound hole in the middle because uh, the rod will be down the center so I want to mask the rod so it can't be seen. Now um, you see now, I've got a lot of material around here to, to use to make a rod with. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, that this is going to have some kind of a rod to hold the pressure. Uh, so, as I said, I'm going to cut this down, this tuner head. Now, you can see where I've already marked off where that's got, the cut's going to go. Um, so, just a little follow-up for you there this morning. Um, now, I, it, the snow went on through the night. There I see. And uh, so, you know, there's nothing any prettier than a fresh fallen snow in the state of Maine. We are Mainers, after all. And so, like I said, the snow will come down and cover up all the junk and all the dog crap until the dogs come back out and crap over the top of the snow again. So, right now it looks very pretty out there, as, as I say. So, anyway, I'm looking right here and I see that I have a piece of a wooden dowel here. And I'm thinking maybe... Um, that I can pop that dowel in there, which means I'll have to make a couple spots hollow in here, um, so the dowel can just pop right in. So they'll just ride in there by friction. And once I get it done, of course, it's never going to come out of there again. Um, so I just figured I'd keep you abreast of this and see, uh, the idea is to, um, drill a hole in the end of this, um, uh, neck block and a hole into the tail block and pop this thing in. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet. I was thinking to make this thing adjustable somehow. Um, so it could be that I'll put a screw in the end of this, uh, or a nut and a bolt in the end of this, so that um, the person could just uh, crank the bolt and uh, adjust this thing the way I want it. Because I'm not sure how to calculate um, this thing, how to get it correct. So, I'm not sure. I'm going to be looking at this uh, over the next couple of days. Now, I told you I was going to be the first of the year, but I got, I'm like, you know what? I want to make this guitar playable. It's going to be really cute when I'm done. And you keep looking for videos, follow-up videos on this. Uh, this is what I got so far. Hello out there. Hello, Mary. Uh, thanks for giving us a call the other day. Um, hopefully, everything's going well with you and your family. Um, we just want to wish everybody out there, hello Presbytera, we want to wish everybody out there a me very Merry Christmas. Not a happy holiday, but Merry Christmas. Christ Mass. We celebrate the day of the birth of our Savior. Now we know that uh, our Savior likely wasn't born on the 25th of December, but it's the day that we've chosen to celebrate it. So there's absolutely not a thing wrong with celebrating the birthday of the Savior. Now, some people will say, oh, well, like, for example, I, I'll use the Jehovah's Witnesses idea, uh, for example. They won't celebrate Christmas because they're saying that uh, it's not really the day of his birthday anyway. And they're saying that the Bible don't really say 
the Bible has Jesus saying to celebrate his death, but, or to remember his death, but not to uh, remember his birthday. Well, you know, uh, you can go ahead and read anything you want into that, my friends. Uh, just because the Bible don't say uh, to celebrate the birthday, it just goes without saying. Uh, if you want to celebrate the birthday of the Lord, then it is not a sin. Contrary to what other people say about that, it's not a sin to celebrate the birthday of the Lord. Just because the Bible don't say to celebrate the birthday don't mean it's forbidden. Does the Bible actually say it's forbidden to celebrate the birthday of the Savior? You see? Uh, that's uh, really what it comes down to. The Bible don't say that it's forbidden, so why uh, are we imposing on people that it's some kind of a sin to celebrate a birthday or the birthday of the Lord? Now, just because um, the, John the Baptist lost his head over a girl's birthday party doesn't mean it is a sin to, to observe birthdays. <laughs> doesn't mean that at all. Um, it's just like, uh, you know, for example, uh, people drive cars every day. Now, are we going to say, um, for example, that uh, it's a sin to drive a car or it's a crime to drive a car because people have used cars to rob banks with? And they're going to forbid everybody from driving cars because uh, they've used cars to rob banks with? No. Uh, it's up to the individual how they behave. It's not up to uh, me to force somebody else to behave in a proper manner. But it's up to everybody else, and their individual behavior is up to them. It's not my place to go around telling people what to do. So you've got to use a little common sense, folks. Uh, now, I know uh, a bunch of people that are brought up in the Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, they're very bitter. Uh, they ha will have nothing to do with the Lord. And they're very bitter because they forced these ideas and these notions on them, and, they, and these kids lived without childhoods. And it's, it's rampant. Like Jehovah's Witnesses is rampant with uh, child abuse of the worst kinds. You see? So instead of helping these kids to become righteous, they've, bring, they've brought these kids into a bitter um, end. I got, I got friends who are very nice, kind people that were brought up by, in the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, they will have nothing to do with God. Nothing at all because of what, what they went through when they were children and Jehovah's Witnesses. So I hope that um, I encourage you today, if you want to celebrate the birth of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, then you do that. Just because the Bible don't say that to do it doesn't mean that it's forbidden. Now, can you show me anywhere in the scripture that forbids celebrating the Savior's birth? See, that's the whole thing. So anyway, glory to Jesus Christ. Have a nice day, folks.